Hi, I'm your host, Nick Braun, and today we're going to talk about phase kickback in quantum algorithms. The concept of phase kickback is widely used in many quantum algorithms and is an essential part of the phase estimation subroutine. While quantum phase estimation is too costly in the number of gates in today's noisy quantum hardware, it does form a key component of proven exponentially faster algorithms such as universal quantum simulation for simulating quantum systems, the HHL algorithm for determining matrix properties, and Shor's algorithm for factoring. If you're interested in the details of how these algorithms work, check out my colleague John's videos on understanding quantum information and computation. While phase kickback forms the basis for quantum phase estimation, which will eventually run on error-corrected, fault-tolerant quantum computers, at the end we'll do a demonstration of phase kickback called the Hadamard test that can run on today's noisy quantum hardware. In this video, we'll explain phase kickback by way of a simple demonstration. Then we apply it to two examples of phase estimation and one application of the Hadamard test to calculate expectation values. In each example, we will also show how to calculate the same result classically using NumPy. What's important to keep in mind is that while we show two different ways of calculating the same value, only the quantum version scales favorably to larger system sizes. This shows the power of quantum computing over classical computing for obtaining certain results. At the heart of phase estimation is that applying a controlled operation has the effect of changing the phase of the control qubit instead of that of the target. This back action concept is rather unintuitive, so let's demonstrate what's going on with some examples. Let's start with a simple example where we can clearly see what's happening. We import the quantum circuit from qiskit.circuit and create a two qubit circuit where we prepare q0 in the plus state with a Hadamard, an equal position of zero and one, and qubit one in the one state with an X gate. We can see the situation on the block sphere by using plot block multivector. Here, Q0 is pointing at the equator along the x-axis, and Q1 is pointing at the one state at the south pole. Mathematically, this corresponds to the state 1 plus, which is equal to the state 1 0 plus 1 1, normalized by the square root of 2, which is notably not entangled because it is equivalent to 1 tensored with 0 plus 1, also normalized by square root of 2. Here we are taking care to write down the qubit order in little Indian notation as Qiskit uses. To show the effect of phase kickback, we now apply a controlled rotation to qubit 1. Using a controlled RZ, we apply an angle of 2 pi over 3 between qubit 0 and 1. Let's plot what this looks like. On its own, the Z rotation does nothing to the 1 state because the qubit 1 is already in the eigenstate of the RZ gate. This is because the gate applies a global phase that is unobservable on its own. It is actually impossible to conceive a measurement to observe this. However, when the RZ gate is controlled on qubit zero, the phase becomes a relative phase between the qubits that can be observed by interference. We can see the effect on block spheres. Qubit one stays the same, whereas zero is rotated around the z-axis. Notice this rotation is an angle of pi over three because the rotation angles operate on half the qubit angle. This is related to why zero and one are perpendicular while being depicted with an 180 degree angle between them in the block sphere. Mathematically, the phase is applied on the 1-1 one, one term of the combined state. However, this state is still separable, so qubit 1 can still be written on its own as still being in the 1 state, while qubit 0 is now a superposition of 0 and 1, but with a phase factor of e to the i pi over 3 on the 1 state, showing that the phase is actually applied to qubit 0, hence the term kickback. We can even verify this numerically if we like, showing the effect of the 1-1 one, one state is indeed a rotation by pi over 3. We write the data from the instruction, and we can calculate the phase with numpy by putting uh, e to the i pi over 3 over the normalization factor of square root over 2, and we see the last array of the element is indeed the same. The phase estimation algorithm allows us to compute the phase introduced by a unitary operator on one of its eigenstates, and is the subroutine responsible for the exponential speedup of many quantum algorithms. Here we explore the phase kickback part of phase estimation with two examples. Most quantum operations are given by unitary operators, which we call u, and we have an eigenstate psi of u. Phase estimation allows us to find the eigenvalue of u. Eigenvalues of unitary operators are always complex exponentials given by a phase or angle with the real axis in the complex unit circle. 
This is shown in this equation, where the eigenvalue of u for eigenstate psi is lambda, corresponding to e to the 2 pi i phi, where phi is the phase we wish to find. Phase estimation allows us to compute the phase bit by bit through successive applications of powers of u, depending on how many bits we have in the evaluation register. If we have an n qubit register, we can observe the phase up to an accuracy of n bits, where each phi i corresponds to a 0 or 1, representing a bit of accuracy. This part of the algorithm uses phase kickback. However, remember that we cannot directly observe the phases of quantum states, and we'll need the quantum Fourier transform to perform the change of basis into something that can be observed. So basically, quantum phase estimation is just phase kickback followed by an inverse quantum Fourier transform. If you'd like the gritty details behind this, my colleague John has a video explaining it in detail. In this video, I'll explain by guiding you through a couple examples. Let's import the quantum register and classical register classes from qiskit.circuit because we'll need to keep track of these. We'll import phase estimation and RZ gate from qiskit.circuit.library. Then we'll construct our evaluation quantum register on four qubits, our single qubit computational register, and a four qubit measurement register for us to measure the evaluation qubits. We create our quantum circuit out of these. We'll do an X gate to the uh, computation register to prepare that in the one state. And then we'll append a four qubit phase estimation circuit with the RZ gate as our controlled unitary. Here we'll put an angle of two pi times two because we'll get half the angle out of this times 0.42. And then we put this on a range of five qubits to include both the computation and evaluation registers. Let's take a look. We see our quantum phase estimation circuit. We can look a little bit closer, and we can see that this consists of a bunch of Hadamards on the evaluation qubits, followed by controlled RZs on each of the computation qubits. This is then followed by an inverse quantum Fourier transform dagger which is going to convert the phase back to the measurement basis for us to measure it. Let's see what is happening to the evaluation register as the controlled rotations are applied to the target register, in this case, a single qubit. When multiplying out all the individual qubit states, the phases show up as multiples of j on state j. Note here that the j values are summed as the digital equivalents of the bit strings representing the quantum states. By applying the quantum Fourier transform, we transfer the phase to the qubit state, which we can then measure. We'll measure this by measuring our evaluation qubits on our classical register. And we can draw that. And then we'll use the sampler primitive that allows us to measure the quasi-probability distributions of outcomes. The primitives allow us to abstract away such things as error mitigation when executing on actual quantum hardware. This gives the result on a state vector simulator. We can plot the quasi-probability distributions with plot histogram as we might have done before with git counts, and we can convert those digital representations to binary with dot binary probabilities. And this is the result. We can see what values are obtained by converting the bit strings back to digits. Remember, those bit strings are in opposite order from the usual little Indian notation, so we must reverse them. And they're in binary, so we must convert them to an integer, and we divide by 2 to the 4 because we have a 4-qubit register. And we see we get a result of 0.4375. We can look at the next biggest answer, and we see 0, 0,1,1,0. 1, 0. When we reverse that and convert it to an integer and do the same thing, we get a result of 0.375. Remember that the value 0.42 is what we put in, which is exactly between these two values, showing how you can calculate this value using the quantum phase estimation. Now let's do a slightly more complicated example by using a two-qubit target register. Many quantum simulation algorithms are based on time evolving a Hamiltonian, an operator physicists and chemists use to describe the energy of things. This process yields the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian corresponding to the discrete energies of the quantum system. In this case, we'll choose a simple two qubit operator, h equals one quarter xx, which does not necessarily correspond to anything, just similar in form to ones that do. We'll see that our initial guess might not be an eigenstate of this Hamiltonian, but with phase kickback, that's OK. What is important is that the initial guess overlaps with the eigenstates of interest. For this example, we'll import the poly evolution gate from qiskit.circuit.library, which will allow us to do this Hamiltonian evolution. 
We'll also get the sparse polyop class from Info that will let us represent this Hamiltonian. We'll start again with a four qubit evaluation register, but this time we'll have a two qubit computation register. But likewise, we will similarly have a four qubit classical register in which we can measure our evaluation register. We create our phase estimation circuit in the same way as before. This time, however, we need to create our Hamiltonian by taking the sparse polyop of the operator xx and giving it a coefficient of 0 0.25 corresponding to 1 quarter. We can then build the polyevolution gate from that by creating a polyevolution gate of 2 times pi times that Hamiltonian, and then we append it to the circuit as we did before. We'll measure the evaluation register into the classical register, and we can take a look at what we get. We see, like we did before, we have Hadamard gates on all the evaluation qubits, followed by controlled polyevolution gates on the two-qubit computation register in this case, followed by an inverse quantum Fourier transform dagger. We can run this on the sampler again and plot the histogram. Let's see what these eigenvalues are by transforming the bit strings again. We have 0010 reverse converted from binary to digital and divided by 2 to the 4, and we get 0.25. And we have 0011 reversed, converted to decimal, and divided by 2 to the fourth, and we see 0.75. We can then also calculate the exact eigenvalues by diagonalizing the Hamiltonian. Here we see eigenvalues of 0.25 and minus 0.25. Huh, the exact values are plus and minus 0.25. But since the phase is only defined modulo 2 pi, the 0.75 answer that we got from phase estimation is actually the same as minus 0.25. So the results are actually equivalent. Our target register started in the 0, 0 state, which is the superposition of two eigenstates of the xx operator. And here we observe eigenvalues of the both eigenstates, plus and minus 0.25. All that's required is the overlap between your initial state and the eigenstate of interest. We can even use phase kickback to calculate expectation values using something called the Hadamard test. By measuring the output of phase kickback in the x and y bases over many experiments, we obtain the average value of an operator. The relative simplicity of this algorithm allows for computation on current quantum hardware. Let's pick an arbitrary 2-qubit unitary. We can do that by importing unitary gate from qiskit.extensions and random unitary from qiskit.quantuminfo. We instantiate our random unitary with a seed of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, with a dimension of 4, which is 2 to the 2 corresponding to 2 qubits. The Hadamard test works by starting out similarly to phase estimation, but only applying one Hadamard gate and the unitary controlled on a single qubit, like we do here. Measurements in the x and y bases correspond to real and imaginary values of the expectation values of u. Here we use the estimator primitive because it allows us to abstract those measurements. We just need to include the observables we want, in this case just the x and y on qubit 0. The overall complex expectation value is our x expectation plus i times our y expectation. And we can see it here. Comparing this to the exact numerical value by obtaining the expectation value of u on the state 0, 0, corresponding to the initial state that we were operating on, we can see we get to the same answer to about the 10th digit. We can see how you use quantum computers to get the same result as conventional classical algorithms. However, since the quantum computers scale much better than classical solutions, we expect quantum computers to be able to solve problems too large for classical computers. In this video, we introduced the important concept of phase kickback, followed by a few demonstrations. We performed two cases of quantum phase estimation, one where the target register was in an eigenstate of U, and one where it was not. We also use the estimator to perform x and y measurements in a Hadamard test to calculate the expectation value of a random unitary. I've been your host, Nick Braun. Thanks for hanging in there.